again, and uh, I have not yet recorded or, or put together all of Gary's Got It's, but it is going to happen. There's going to be a chorus of Got It at some point, uh, but uh, but I haven't done it yet. And anyway, this is Binary Jazz. Uh, it's a podcast uh, that you're listening to or, or maybe watching, um, and uh, yeah, that's all. That's the intro. That's the thing. Uh, I got nothing. I got nothing to say to bring. <laughs> that's Chris. I'm Allison, and that's Gary. There we go. That's what I was missing. <laughs> thank you for thank you for carrying that part. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was saying to Chris at the beginning of this that it is 70 degrees out right now. What? I know. Oh, I've got the windows open upstairs. The kids are outside playing during quiet time. It's like. It's uh. It's really something. It's really something. I need to look uh, up what my weather is in Fahrenheit. I have no idea. It, th- I mean, this is this is. I think we set like a, a high record yesterday. Um, I took the guitar to a nursing home and like, I was like, why aren't we doing this outside? <laughs> like, we don't need to be doing this in the parlor. Like, we need to be doing this outside. Like, this might be the best day ever. <laughs> Well, I mean, I will I will tell you that I looked at my uh, phone weather app uh, last night and it was at some point and it was like 15 degrees. So uh, and that's Fahrenheit, not Celsius. So we're on the other side of of that uh, global warming uh, teeter totter, Gary. Yeah, it is 16 degrees here currently in Fahrenheit mm. <laughs> or negative nine as I know it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cold. Yeah, cold. The, Just cold. the one thing I will give to Celsius versus Fahrenheit is it's relatively easy. I would say probably easier to say, to look at a temperature and say, yeah, warm yeah. or yeah, cold. Like mm-hmm. if it's zero, yeah, cold. Cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it's, if it's 30, yeah, it's warm. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of hot. Yeah. Uh, somewhere in between. Eh, we don't know <laughs> i feel like my my zone is like 2022 20, that's like really like a nice a nice comfortable day <laughs> what what is i have to i'll have to google it what's that in fahrenheit um probably it's like 70 oh 68 yeah yeah 68 like, to just... 72 that's amazing yeah. it's like a good zone right like i actually should look and see i said it was 70 i might be lying i don't know what the weather is because it's so perfect i don't care no don't it's... don't don't ruin it with a number just okay enjoy it. it's yeah well i mean that's yes yes there was a point yesterday where i turned the ac on for like 10 minutes upstairs and 10 minutes downstairs just to just to bring it down a little wow. and then um now i have it like you know set up to kick the heat on if it gets cold but we're not going to need that for well i take that back we'll need that tomorrow morning when it's like in the 40s again but I can't for right remember. now, oh, right now, it's magic. I can't remember if the things that we just got put in stairs you... will switch. Uh, we'll have that have that like automatically. Cold. Yeah, I think you need to no. You need to set a temperature and you need to turn it on hot or cold. I had nice Nest thermostats, and when we replaced the system downstairs, I couldn't use the the Nest downstairs yeah. because this one has like fancy features that make the yeah. fan come and go and all sorts okay fine whatever no sooner did i do that than the thermostat upstairs started reading incorrectly the nest it was like it had like something go bad in it and the nest itself was warm so it was reading Mm. like it was 84 degrees and it was Mm. like 50 so but it still had the it was still trying to run the ac i'm like what in the world so i was mad and i was like i'm gonna replace but i was like no i'm gonna go buy the cheapest thermostat i can at lowe's so you can see it right up there (laughs) it's like a $17.99 $17.99 special. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wired it myself, put it in. It works. Did not start any fires. I did forget to turn the power off when I took it out, like when I unhooked the nest and created a spark at first. And then I, uh, I turned the power off. I, I accidentally uh, unplugged our furnace uh, like a week or so ago, probably the last week, um, because I was – so our 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 – our furnace room is the same room as our laundry room and uh, the washing machine. We had these cool like front loading washer dryer that we, that came with the house, which is like the fanciest freaking washer dryer we've ever had. 
Um, but, um, and I haven't, we haven't really figured out like if it's when it's too heavy or when it's too light uh, or both uh, that the washing machine will like to like, you know, bounce around. Walk. Yeah. Yeah. Go, yeah, go for, go for a stroll. Um, so I was shoving it back into place and I think it was when I was shoving it back into place that I bumped the, the cords for the, the furnace, which also I guess was like the main power that also connected up to the nest. So I came home one day and it was cold, like we were out and it was, it was cold when we got home and the nest was like, like had like a machine error, like icon on it. And it's it was like, like, I tried, man. But yeah. I and it was it. like, you need to wire your stuff. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And I looked at the wires and they're all connected. And then, and then it's like, um, battery low powering down. I'm like, wait, 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 don't do that. I need to change the temperature. Uh, and then it was, and then I was like, okay, uh, well, let's just make sure that like the switch is on and all the stuff is on downstairs. Uh, and yeah, the cord just a little bit out of the plug. So, uh, so that was my coolness. And then, and then like, you know, I plugged it in and, and, and everything kicked back in and, and it started working. So that was nice, but it was, it was like a moment of like, oh shit, we just spent all this money on this brand new furnace and now for some reason the nest is like not working when it just like like randomly like it's been working this whole time um but yeah that doesn't control the stuff that we have upstairs which are individual sort of units that are sitting um like in the wall uh and have their own separate remotes uh for them mm -hmm. and you can only you can only give it a temperature um or you could give it a schedule but it doesn't automatically it doesn't have like a, a temperature sensor of its own mm -hmm. i mean it does but it doesn't tell you on the thing like what the temperature is um and it doesn't it just <laughs> says like just like you have it to this so good luck i love it's the like, idea of like oh it knows it just doesn't tell you yeah <laughs> well i was yeah. gonna say it's like old school cars where you have like, just a knob you turn and it was like more blue or more red mm -hmm. like it's really kind of chilly in here can we make it more red sure right. yeah like, that's <laughs> very logical um when our new furnace went in one of the weirdest i think it's the weirdest thing the um they wired it and then on the wall where it's wired to there's like this you know metal pipey now we yeah. a conduit thing yeah. that comes in yep. to a switch and then a conduit out so it's like yep. got like a literal switch which i guess makes sense if you're going to work on it like you can just put the switch off and then you know it's off yeah we have a, we have a switch too but i guess that plugs into an actual outlet because that was the that's thing funny. that was unplugged. So like that's there hysterical. is a switch. Yeah, there is a switch. And I can so turn like the some switch like off. electrician was like wiring this thing and was like had the other end, and they were like, hmm, put a power outlet and plugged it in. <laughs> yeah, well the outlet is new that's too because we had a different outlet that that like that was already like you know it's like a foot away or something. That's um, even better. So they had yeah. to put an outlet, and so it was up to code to handle the load. But they were like, let's just plug it in. Like yeah. forget hard wiring this <laughs> thing. I mean, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's like legal up to code. I just think foot code is hysterical. Like one of yeah. them for us is that um, the exhaust flue has to be six feet from a window, which means like the corner the the furnace is in, like they couldn't go out any walls that were close to there. So there's this pipe that like follows the edge of my um, basement and goes out like the back, sort of in an area where there's no windows. But it, it seemed very arbitrary. And they, one of the reasons they were slow putting in is because they didn't have enough pipe to run that. They were like, we can't run it. We don't have the exhaust. A far distance, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like nobody nobody, nobody has walls this far from their furnace. Like, well, it's, <laughs> it's in a corner. Like you can't get any closer to a wall. But apparently those two walls don't work. So. Yeah, I, I, that, that, I keep thinking about how we, we were supposed to, they, they didn't schedule an inspection. First world to problems. To, um, okay. To, to come in and they gave me a little notice in the mail saying you need to do this so i i did it uh and i went through the website like for the city government website and the way it's set up is like you have like the the you know job id or whatever um but like there's stuff that's already attached to that so like the stuff that was attached to that job id was all their stuff whatever they put in so like the phone number and everything was was their information Wrong. so the inspector came in came and went next door, like right there, like where I'm looking. Uh, and that house is actually under construction um, and has been since we moved in and had like one of those red 
uh, notices on the door. It says like, do not occupy whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and so the, the inspector went to that door, saw the notice and was like, well, we, I don't have access. I, I tried calling the number and nobody answered. Like there's nobody here. Uh, and, and went back and said, I couldn't, and said they couldn't do it. So now, like, I, since I have no way of, of, of like, reconciling like i have no way of like saying no come back you're the that was the wrong house i have to i, I probably have to call the city which i've been just procrastinating since november um because <laughs> i don't uh, think it matters at this point yeah they don't need to, i mean whether they're, they're going to inspect it they're going to be like oh it's wrong you have to get the hvac people back out and they're not going to want to do that so it's working as long as it's plugged in it's fine <laughs> i mean that's just what you need to do is you need to put a label on the wire that says do not Unplug, not this unplug this thing, otherwise everything yeah. will be very cold. This is important. That's probably the very last hot. step to be up to code. Just like commenting your code. Yeah, Just... exactly. Oh my god! You're like, this is necessary for this whole functionality to work. This it is was, structural. It was pretty this is load wild. Bearing. It was pretty wild to for that to be the fix. Like seeing two yeah. plugs that were like slightly ajar. Uh, and putting them back in and then going upstairs and magically the nest is working like that shouldn't be that shouldn't be right like... have you have you um have you tried to level your washer no because usually when it walks what's Gary, happening is you just heard him say that he's been, pro been procrastinating a phone call since november he's not leveling a washer <laughs> he's like wait until it's warm outside and then we can do housework like that i got it i'm sorry it's a dumb question i would have answered no like a week ago too so my bad <laughs> My bad. No one's leveling a washer. We've all, the world is in turmoil. I get it. I, yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah, the only reason mine is not is because there's sun. Do you all want to just look at the sun instead of me? Would that be better? <laughs> I mean, I mean, we see light in a window, yeah. but that's about it. We don't. <laughs> I mean, I have it's... sun. Too. I have sun as well. It's just I, yeah, I, I, cold outside. Yeah, yeah, oh. same. You know what's going to happen too? I'm sitting here and um, as it moves through the sky, or as the Earth rotates, as the sun is moving through the sky, it's 93 billion miles away. Billion or million? Oh, that seems like a big difference. I should know that. I guess maybe it doesn't matter. What can I do about it? It doesn't actually matter. It makes no difference whether this I know This is binary it jazz, Gary. You just make up an answer, and it's probably the right one. I thought it was How trillion. far away is the sun? Million. 91.9. It, it fluctuates because of the way we rotate. In any case, 92 million. Where was I going with this? It's not know, moving through the sky. It's ninety three million. The, well. It was something about the, how the sun was going to move, basically. So as the as as we rotate during the day, it will shift to this window, and this chair I'm sitting at some point becomes like I'm like a cat, like I can't even see the computer screen. It's warm, and I just sit here and pretend like I'm working. Like, <laughs> yeah. just close the laptop at that point. Why pretend? It's dumb, but I have to. I yeah. I say this like I've done it a lot of times. Like yesterday, I was functionally unable to work for like thirty minutes because the sun felt so good. Like, I need it on socks. I'm sitting in this chair without socks on yesterday. Like, oh, oh my gosh. We really I can't are wait for just like different types of plants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just like, oh, I just needed sun. That's all. <laughs> it's fine. It's, it's crazy. It is crazy. Like it's like that. You're right. You're absolutely right. Like that hit. And I'm, it, it's, it's like someone like, like if my brain were a pillow, someone flipped it over and the cool side is up now. It's that's what's happened to me. The cool <laughs> side of my brain is up. Uh, well, Allison was asking me about uh, yeah. uh, before we before we started recording about uh, a live stream that I was on this week, uh, wherein uh, I was on. But I, I was the WordPress expert. I actually had quotations in my in my bottom third. Uh, because I don't like calling myself a WordPress expert. And if I have control over what that bottom third is going to be, I'm going to be like, yeah, I'm a WordPress expert. It just says, I do WordPress. <laughs> I mean, I also put like my actual title. Uh, right. So it, okay. it was like, it was like senior software engineer and WordPress expert um, uh, about uh, talking with the, the marketing director uh, who had this whole thing uh, about, um, uh, the pantheon cdn uh mm. and um and one of the business ops type people um don't remember what her title is off the top of my head now which is bad um but anywho uh it was he has a whole thing so there is a um because we started doing this live 
live stream thing instead of uh, office hours, which is a thing that that they've been doing for a really long time is just having like a set time to jump on Zoom and like ask questions or whatever. Um, but as Pantheon is trying to target like more enterprise stuff, the office hours thing feels like a relic of like smaller biz, more, you know, mm. smaller projects sort of thing. Um, so we're all so we're alternating. We're doing one like a, a live yeah. stream with a topic, and then an, uh, an alternating with the with the office hours. Um, so the first one, the first live stream that that uh, they did, I was a attendee. I was just filling up the chat uh, and snarking. Uh, oh, you was, were there to seed to seed questions. Yes, I was the plant. <laughs> yeah, a different type of plant. Um, I'm like, were you laying in the sun? <laughs> I don't think and I also, was your title plant? No, it was not plant. <laughs> I mean, air not, quotes. Not, yeah. Um, in case you're listening and not watching. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so that one was just about like how CDNs work, uh, really. And so he used like Legos and stuff, uh, and I, I drew out a diagram in crayon and like, you know, it was cute and whatever. So we continued the crayon and Lego theme to talk about like the, um, the, page cache plugin that we maintain and um, how it works and and like dramatized a a problem of a problem of like you know content editor puts in content and then they change it and then the change isn't reflected right away because mm -hmm. it hasn't been cleared um mm -hmm. and so the plugin and then showing the plugin doing its thing which is like when the content is changed and the cache is cleared for that particular post and what's is the caching is it, it's full page cache we're talking about correct mm -hmm. So it's like a flush URL that you basically like pass yes. like the, the URL yes. to, yeah. to flush. Is it varnish? Yes. I don't have any more questions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's 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 the defense it's, rests, Your Honor. <laughs> it's 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 maybe like that. I just it's varnish like. I, it's not technically varnish, it's like a fork of varnish because it's what it's fastly and fastly um mm, okay. took took a point of varnish and forked it and did their own stuff to it in addition. Got it. Uh, and separate. Does it, it use off. like standard it uses, BCL? Yes. Yes. Okay. It uses BCL. Yeah. I I love um, that side of the internet. Do you? Um, yeah. Yes. Not fastly, but like the 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 layers before you get to like execution of code. Um, but I also think there's not like a lot there. I feel like it's repetitive. Like working in that space would be repetitive. Um, I mean, there's quite a bit that you can actually, there's a, quite a bit of magic that you can do at that layer. I just don't know all of it. Um, but I know that there's, there's a lot tons of magic. You that layer. I yes. know there's a lot of magic that you can do, um, which is pretty interesting. Um, and I played with that a little, I've, I have played with that a little bit, but, um, I certainly don't know, you know, half of anything that, that you, I mean, you know, cause it's, there's just In so the much there. In the early days, the early days, in the I don't know what the early days are, many moons ago, like before, like back when like WordPress specific hosting was like Pantheon and WP Engine basically were like the people you could go to. Um, they're I'm like, impressed that you put Pantheon in there. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't, I don't know that there was, who else was around then. I mean, like think about like days before like Pagely, like every host but now Pagely is, was pretty small. Are they that old? Mm -hmm. I mean, because there was a time like, like you know, all like the normal hosts, like. Pagely was one of the first managed One click install wasn't a thing. Yeah. Okay. Pagely was one of the Pagely. first managed. I think I just didn't consider them because they were so damn expensive. Yeah. Um, so maybe that's why. Um, back in those days, um, I was working on, on a site and um, we had enough traffic that needed like some kind of caching layer. And so I sadly got intimately familiar with how not to do things with Varnish. I know a lot of ways to not accomplish things with Varnish. Uh, specifically related, related to um, serving stale content. I can serve you stale content like you wouldn't believe. You think the Wayback Machine's got stuff going on. Wait until you see the way Gary does it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fantastic experience. I learned a ton. Those I are, also almost convinced myself I couldn't do this. It's almost like that's the stack overflow that I need sometimes is like, don't do it like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> hey, you're 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 doing the following. Here are the things you shouldn't do. That's a really good idea. It I mean, yeah. obviously it depends on the subject matter, but there are some topics where I'm like, no, I shouldn't have done it like that and others should yeah. learn. 
There's there should just be a new website that's called Overflowing Stack. Overflowing <laughs> Stack. <laughs> which I, is which is just like I did this and I, this I is did wrong. this and it was bad. <laughs> and you can upvote. I, yeah. The, no, I did it. I did it wronger. <laughs> Yeah. I, I put a set timeout to check every five seconds whether something had changed well, or like what's I'm the okay wrongest way the question should be things like what's the wrongest way to do this <laughs> <laughs> what's the worst way to do this so like one of the worst ways you want to bring one of yeah. the worst ways of, of emulating a slow wordpress uh website which we did the first on the first live stream or, or steve or our marketing director did the first uh on the first live stream was put in a sleep command a sleep function um I and it. then yeah and then um <laughs> no on on load uh and uh and also put in a, a randomized like so with every page load it sets a random cookie <laughs> <laughs> with no content just a random cookie yes. so like you just get a million cookies <laughs> just for, for funsies yeah um but it was it was the it was the sleep timer that actually like affected the i mean the other things that he did he tried to like break it in a bunch of different ways but the thing that broke it the, the worst was the sleep timer like you could you could watch the waterfall and it was like okay well that's it took it took 3.25 seconds to load and we have a three second timer so <laughs> like we know what the other things are doing i have a good story about something that happened to me this past week that yes. is you don't see the plot twist you don't see i've been working and i'm gonna keep it vague because clients um yeah but um i'm working for a company i have been for a while on this website and in the process the person who was their like webmaster has exited and then they were hiring someone new so i'm a, i'm a contractor and i will eventually marry poppins away but this person will help me build the website and then help maintain and, and add new things to the website, whatever. So they hired this new person, didn't consult me. The, the new person is bad at communication, lies about their skill set, um, just basically hits all the checkpoints of like frustration. Where And also this person didn't need to lie because I basically was just like, you don't need to know advanced custom fields already. I'll teach you. Like, where are you at with this plugin? Mm -hmm. Like stuff like that, where I'm just like, the expectation was not that they knew everything, but yeah. that they were just willing to learn. And yet mm -hmm. they still lied for some reason. And so this went on and on for like since December. And basically I'm then mm. unfortunately not doing my own work. I'm basically like wrangling this circus over here instead of doing what I need to do. Um, and this person finally was let go on Tuesday which is unfortunate, but also like the writing was on the wall and like, I don't know, I'm not part of the organization. So I'm assuming that they did other things that weren't up to snuff in the process. Um, did you ever talk to the client about that particular person? Yes, I did. Because I was basically just like, hey, I'm not hitting deadlines that I would normally be hitting. Because you're having to babysit. Because I'm having to watch this person and do extra code reviews and they're not letting me guide them essentially yeah um because i don't mind like mentoring and teaching i just need to know that i need to do it like yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um anyway we're all adults i don't understand anyway so my level of frustration but then my level of frustration is then oh now i have even more to do because now i'm back to a solo person and i have to do all the stuff that they didn't do in the last three months <laughs> mm -hmm. which was nothing like they asked me oh they're returning their computer should we scrape any of the files and i was basically like no <laughs> like that's <laughs> let me save you some time <laughs> yeah let me just i'm like don't even have it just no just don't um and then wednesday i get an email so i'm going on my merry way i'm just like okay this is happening tasks aplenty let's do this um i get an email on wednesday that's basically like, hey, that person hired me to do the work on this organization site. So they hired a subcontractor to write horrible code. <laughs> and now this person owes me money. Can you help me get my money? <laughs> And they sent it to me and the organization and I was just, and they were just like, Allison, that's up to you to like do all this stuff. And they were basically just like, I wrote all this code for the website. They even sent the link to the private GitHub repo. 
like so I was just like oh this because it read like a scam email mm-hmm. and I was just like and I was like this mm-hmm. is really odd but I was like but they know stuff that people wouldn't know otherwise and they mentioned it in the email and I was like I can't believe that this person had a job for months and was subcontracting the work to someone else Who's and you? giving access to the company's website and like all the stuff oh, oh. wow So that explains why the person said that they knew things and why things I know anything why they were resistant to like (laughs) reviewing code or doing or like you know having having that like dialogue with you because they legitimately weren't doing the things that they were saying. I know it explains so much. I was like, oh wow, that's why they were so avoidant of like, hey, let's pair program or like let's just go over this code together Mm -hmm. or like any of that. It was always like, no, no, I work best if I take it away and work. And I just was like, some people, I was like, some people work like that. And I didn't want to be super pushy in the beginning, but then I got more pushy as time went on. Cause I was just like, this is my nightmare. Um, wow. But I can't believe that there are people out there doing that. Like, and they called themselves a full stack developer. Well, I'm I would sure. like to add. I'm sure. And I was just like, why? Like I'm out there with imposter syndrome just questioning every life choice I make. And there are people out there that are just like so confident and sociopathic that they don't even worry about getting caught. Like This was obviously a man, right? Like I'm, I'm going to, no. Je- no, it wasn't. <laughs> wow. Okay. So statistically, statistically um, that is improbable because there are, there have been studies done about, um, you know, who is most likely to misrepresent themselves to have more experience than they do. And men are far more f- co- uh, frequent to do that. And women are far more likely to see a thing on like a job description and not apply to it, even even if they know th- the stuff, because they don't necessarily tick that box in their own head. But yeah, men like they are discount like, that experience. Yeah. But like yeah. men are like, you know, well, I kind of know React, so I'm gonna, it's I'm gonna apply. AWS, so <laughs> it's kind of the same thing. So, so yeah, so that's why, that's why I run, I jump to the conclusion that obviously this is a man because, like, no, like statistically, like that is in- incredibly improbable that somebody would would of of you know uh, that demographic would would be willing to put themselves in that position that's 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 wild absolutely mind-boggling and also the the salary that this person was receiving is not does not justify hiring a does not justify this yeah it does not justify this in the slightest it's an arts organization well, like unless they're like doing this in multiple places right well i i honestly think that maybe they were trying to hold like two or three jobs at the same time or something or i don't even know i just yeah. i can't it's 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 similar did they to misrepresent when... where they're from or did they have to go into an office i guess they had to go into an office huh no they didn't have to go into an office it's all remote because like i'm thinking well if they're from india or something then then they could well i mean they were definitely sub- still in canada well i mean i say definitely but i don't really know right yeah well that's what that's what i mean like they had I... to ship a computer so i'm assuming somewhere in canada <laughs> probably because there would be like hefty shipping costs outside the country <laughs> so weird and it just it's similar to when my brain my introvert brain tries to wrap my brain around people being extroverted it's a similar like leap where my brain can't quite understand why someone would go through so much logistical work yeah well that that is that is a significant amount of logistical work like i'm like i can barely juggle like again i'm not leveling a washer i can barely juggle you know my own real life let alone lies and I don't know. Anyway, that was my soap opera that, drama for this week. That's pretty, that is that's pretty, pretty amazing. impressive. Yeah, that's yeah, a that's clients from hell. That's a clients from hell uh, story. Um, I, I'm still at that spot where, like, if I'm struggling with a task and I'm like hitting a brick wall, I'm like, maybe this is the week. Like when I, it turns out that I actually can't do this job, and <laughs> that's pretty much been every week for seven years, six years. <laughs> <laughs> like. <laughs> Like it can't be, it can't be healthy. It can't be a healthy mental process for your brain to constantly being living in that space, right? Like it's got to be like what's a the alternative? Nightmare. I mean, I know the alternative is like not, but like how I do mean, you there? I mean, I've been working on a thing for like the last week and a half or something, and I mean, okay, so there's a there's a plugin that was written by some other team uh, who doesn't know WordPress 
coding standards, hasn't really written a plugin for the .org, and it so they wrote it functionally so that it works functionally, but it doesn't have like it's not written in sort of a WordPressy way necessarily, and it doesn't have nonces, it doesn't have like other things like you know that sort sure. of stuff. So like the idea was like have somebody from my team come in and look at it and do a code review, but also, or code audit, uh, but also like fix anything that I found or that we found. So I took it, I'm like, oh yeah, this is a code audit and there'll be just a couple things. No, I'm actually rewriting the entire thing. <laughs> I am. Um, You're like, uh, no, no, I want an uh, I wanted an authorship tag on this. Oh, there there is going to be one. <laughs> <laughs> um and like and that's fine. Like I'm happy to do that. But like I was running into issues and what I realized later was that the issues I was running into was the way that they were like it had to do with how they were saving data, like in the settings and whatever, because they were doing a sort of weird thing. And so I was like, well, why are they doing that? And like, I was, I was hitting that brick wall and it, it wasn't like the thing where like, I don't know, like, I'm not good at my job sort of thing. It was like, I know the answer was here somewhere. I don't mm -hmm. know how I'm going to get there or where, it, you know, but I, I know that if I keep banging my head against this enough times, I'm pretty confident I'll be able to dig myself out of this hole. That's a very that's a very healthy approach and one that I should probably adopt more often instead of just being like, I'm throwing my laptop out the window. I am never coding again. I mean, there's definitely, there is definitely frustration. Like there's definitely like, this is just not working. I don't know what the hell is going on, but like, I, I still like the whole time, like, I know, like, I'm just going to hit it. I'm going to keep working on it tomorrow. I'm going to keep working on it, whatever. And eventually the answer will come. And each, each day it was like, okay, I figured out one more thing that mm -hmm. it was doing. And like, you know, so it gave you a bit of hope. Yeah. Yeah. When I, when I left tribe about two years, like two ish years ago, I, um, I joked at the time that I was leaving because there were some tickets that I'd been sitting on for long enough. And I knew there was never, I was never gonna be able to finish them. And they were finally catching up with me. Um, and I said it jokingly, although half believing it. Then when I left craft pee, I was like, yeah, it's time for me to go because this ticket has been around for a year and I have no idea how to solve it. <laughs> and it was a quasi joke. Um, when I left RV, I, uh, I didn't have any of those tickets because we just did do a lot there. <laughs> <laughs> my, my most recent major hurdle has been making a tribe plugin accessible. Mm. And it's a paid plugin. And I'm over here yeah. nickeling and diming. It's ridiculous. I'm like, why is this not keyboard accessible? Like I can't tab through my filter. So ridiculous. so what what you should do is um however wherever that code is going, if it's going in their plugin or if it's going into like a forked version or whatever, like put that code up somewhere and then like send it to tribe and say, hey. I did this for you. I can do this for you for money. Uh, <laughs> please pay me to make your stuff accessible, and that's, I will do it. That's I'm doing because you're doing it anyway. Thing? Like you've already done the work, and they need to like the, you know like they need to pay the, somebody to do that work. The Galaxy Brain move would be setting up a consultancy that says we make X plugin accessible and resell that code 150 times over. <laughs> that, but that would be the. Yeah, but then you need to maintain it. Like you need to maintain the updates that they're doing into your code, and then you. But have the to problem like... is, is that because of the way it's built, with like they use select two, which is like part mm -hmm. of the problem. Right. Yep. That I'm doing the hackiest nonsense to get it to work on my site, and I'm just like, well, it feels hacky. It it's not that bad, but it's just not that. It's not. The code. It's not the that way that like. it's not the way that you would like to do it because you don't. Have no, I'd much prefer to get in there, but I'm like, yeah. but I can't get in there without disrupting other functionality. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Also, kind of <laughs> like my my people just want their filter to be accessible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I I still like I fully advocate for saying like I had to go through all this work uh, to make this accessible, and I can I can do this if you pay me to do it for you. I'm just shocked that it's not a priority for, yeah. a lot. Well, I mean, for a lot of, this isn't just them for yeah, a lot, for sure. but like, we are working uh, with an accessibility company. I should, I should share this because I, I clearly uh, don't spend much time writing markup. <laughs> um, I, just, I just don't, I don't have to, like I'm, I'm solving other weird problems generally. Um, but the way we're set up at the moment, like there's enough front end work and there's this whole bucket of accessibility things we need to fix. Um, so I spent, I don't know, four or five days in working with accessibility. And um, 
I will admit prior to that, like I've sort of been like, oh yeah, that's a thing like I'll pay more attention to when I have to, when I'm writing markup and having to get my hands dirty. Like it's, uh, all right, backend people that are listening, it is no more work to write accessible markup than it is to write markup in the first place. Yep. Just do it right and do it once. Yeah. It is the right thing to do for all users. So preach it, preach it. <laughs> yeah, my problem is 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 less doing that and more like just. I mean, I I've always enjoyed having an accessibility consultant on a project because, mm -hmm. be, to, like, having somebody to look over my shoulder and say this should be that thing. Like, I'm happy to do that thing. I just don't necessarily know as I'm writing the code that that is the thing that I should be thinking about in the moment as I'm doing that. You know. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and there's a there, like, there's like some... it's nice to have like that sort of like external, you know, validation and, and check. And there's probably what the actual answer is, is like some sort of automated uh, accessibility testing, you know. There's for, definitely for, nuance, you know. um, but there's also like the first 80% is, yeah, is like it, it it's, it's gimme stuff. Like everyone should be doing it. Mm -hmm. um, stop half assing alt text like make it useful yes, yes. like yeah alt equals I, photo. I, oh my gosh well or like here's here's one that we ran actually got burned on a lot and this is i i hadn't considered this um we had a lot where the alt text was the title of whatever was being linked to and they're like yeah how is that helpful like you're going to the link but then you're gonna see the image that also has the same alt text like that right that's duplicative and annoying or like, alt equals have you tried? file name well, that's not that. No, that's like, yeah, totally agree with you. Unacceptable. But like, but then the conversation about, you know, alt text is very situational. Like this picture yep. of Mars is different in this use case than it might be in another. Yep. Okay. These are things we need to, we need to address. So um, I don't want to get away real quick though, without saying Chris recently shared a link. I think you should publicly share the link of the, uh, the gist of my code review from <laughs> six months ago. Gary's 90 day code review, 90 days, 60 days. I don't 60 remember. Days, I, yeah. I don't remember either. A code review of uh, my early days as a, a paid developer. <laughs> I totally missed this. Yeah, I shared it. I shared it in Slack. Yeah, I'll put I'll put the link in. The okay, there's no way I, I can reshare. It's I can mostly reshare. like if it's commented code, delete it. Make your comments. It's code formatting mostly. Yeah, it was very nice. It was I was it was not <laughs> it was not bad. Although there was a couple things where where like. Chris now, things, Chris you know. now looking at it then is like, wow, Chris can be a real dick. <laughs> <laughs> but it was about like nitpicky stuff. Like, Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.